After a devastating disaster hits Earth, two survivors think they are the only people left. However, after meeting another survivor, their peace is at risk. In the city of Leda, Didak helps out a mechanic in fixing a tractor. He listens to the radio and learns that the world is experiencing an emergency since solar storms alter the temperature. Upon hearing this, the mechanic immediately turns off the radio, thinking it is nonsense. He approaches Didak and tells him they are experiencing an alien invasion, not a natural phenomenon. Meanwhile, a teen named Alba rides her motorbike to visit visit her father, Dara, a climatologist. Upon reaching his location, she creates a video diary documenting her daily life. Afterward, she enters the cave. Inside, Alba meets her father, who is busy examining the cave. He greets her, and Alba expresses the coldness she's feeling from the area. This escalates into them conversing about the recent shift in temperature. While at it, Alba pulls out her phone and asks her father to share a message for her video diary. Dara complies, and he emphasizes the importance of his study. Additionally, he strongly advocates for taking care of nature. A few moments later, Alba drives to the city, where she meets Didak and his mother, Trini. Since Alba is Didak's English teacher, Trini inquires about his progress in the language. Alba reveals that Didak is a good listener. While the three are conversing, a group of teens suddenly stop by and bully Didak. Trini angrily chases them away, but the boys threaten Didak before leaving. After the visit to the city, Alba goes home and sees her father getting ready to leave for Barcelona. She greets him, and they converse. But, their conversation immediately ends since Dara is in a hurry. Dara tries to hug Alba, but the girl refuses, stating that his hands are dirty. Due to that, Dara leaves with a hurt feeling. The next day, Didak's bullies gang up at him and plan to throw him into the lake. Alba sees this, and she comes to his rescue, trying to stop the group. However, the bullies still throw Didak into the lake. Upon witnessing it, Alba immediately dives into the water to rescue Didak. While saving the boy, the solar storm finally hits and envelops the world with red terror. Alba pulls Didak out of the water, and she resuscitates him. While doing so, she observes the catastrophe but remains alert in saving Didak. After performing chest compression, Didak gains consciousness, and the two find their way home. While walking, the two observe how every infrastructure is burned to ashes whereas people are burned to death. This causes Didak to panic and search for his mother. However, he finds her lifeless under the fallen debris. Alba comforts the hysterical child and pulls him away when the burning house explodes. After that, the two spend the day walking and enduring the harsh snowfall just to reach Dara's cave. Once inside, Alba opens a chest that contains her father's supplies and distributes them among themselves. The next morning, Alba and Didak leave the cave to visit Alba's residence. Upon reaching their destination, Alba breaks down when she sees their house in shambles. Therefore, they seek refuge at her father's farmhouse. Alba immediately tries to use the phone and orders Didak to see if the radio is still working. After discovering that the phone is not functioning, she quickly tries to operate Dara's laptop, which is also faulty. Thankfully, the solar charger remains functional. She tries to contact Dara using her smartphone, but the man isn't answering, much to Alba's dismay. Due to that, the two agree to go out and seek help. Outside, Alba and Didak see how empty and horrendous the city has become. Out of curiosity, Didak wanders to the police's car and grabs a gun from the trunk. He shows it to Alba, and she quickly tells the boy to return it. Suddenly, Alba tells Didak they must leave, and their new destination is Barcelona. Alba tries to ride a motorcycle, but Didak pushes her from behind. This causes Alba to hit the rubble, and she falls. Upon falling, her flank is impaled on a metal, and she bleeds. Didak apologizes, and they agree to return to Alba's residence. During the night, Alba wakes up due to her wound's pain. After cleaning it, she looks at their previous photos, feeling sentimental. The next day, Alba reads her father's diary for the the first time. She learns that Dara is right in saying Earth has been warning us. Afterward, she starts another video diary and says she's recording a video to keep her sane. She also reveals that she feels sad that no one came to rescue them. Abruptly, she ends the video. That night, Alba runs a fever, so Didak takes care of her. The boy tries to make a small talk, but Alba is unresponsive. Therefore, Didak checks her wound, only to find it infected. Alba weakly tells him she needs antibiotics, so he plans to get some. Before he can go, Alba stops him, telling him she will get them herself since it is dangerous outside. Curious, Didak puts his hand on Alba's chest, trying to feel her heart. Alba feels weak, so she returns to sleep. Didak kisses her forehead and tells Alba not to leave him. Without hesitation, he immediately leaves the farmhouse and puts on his gear. Though afraid, he musters his courage and rides his bike to fetch Alba's antibiotics. It is dawn when Didak finally obtains the medicine. He immediately injects it into Alba, hoping for her fast recovery. Then, he visits his previous home, grieving for his loss. Afterward, he sneaks into the mechanic's garage 
garage and inspects the tractor. The morning comes, and Alba wakes up feeling better. While she checks on her wound, Didak wakes up, and he is relieved to see her recovered. He immediately hugs her and kisses her cheek. Once Didak lets go, Alba asks him to examine her wound. Didak tells her that her wound is healed, and it turns into a huge scar. Despite that, Alba is optimistic, telling the boy she likes tattoos and scars since they tell good stories. At night, Alba resumes her video diary, and reveals that she plans to visit Barcelona. However, she is scared she and Dara will miss meeting each other once they reach there. When morning comes, Didak is having a nightmare. He wakes up and calls out for Alba, but she is nowhere to be found. When he looks at the bedsheet, he notices blood, and he panics, thinking something terrible has happened to her. Therefore, he rides his bicycle and looks for her. He finds Alba near the river and asks her if a man has hurt her. This confuses Alba. Instead, she denies his assumption. When Didak looks at her thighs, he sees blood, so he inquires Alba about it. Alba explains that the blood is due to her period. However, the concept is foreign to Didak, so she further explains it. Upon learning that Alba can have children, Didak inquires if she wants them. Alba gives him an ambiguous answer and just splashes him with water. Because of this, Didak fights back, and the two spend a few seconds playing with water. This doesn't escape Didak's curiosity, and he tries to touch her chest. Alba swats his hand and tells him it's inappropriate. Then, she orders him to return home. After a couple of days, Didak practices his aim, but the noise alerts Alba, and she hurriedly stops him. She inquires about where he obtained the gun. Didak answers, he got it from the police car. Upon learning that, Alba orders him to leave the gun as she doesn't want him to get hurt. However, Didak reasons that he has to practice his aim since he is the house's protector. For Alba, this is nonsense, so she firmly orders him to put the gun down. Though Didak complies, he irritatingly marches away. After three months, Alba's hope for a rescue wavers. Therefore, the two of them learn how to support themselves through Dara's survival guide. Throughout their journey, Alba always documents their progress through her video diary. She treats her camera as her best friend, and uses it to reveal how they adapt to their current situation. Many years later, a lot of things have changed, especially Didak. He transforms into a strong, reliable, and attractive young man. These changes don't escape Alba's attention, and she can't deny the strange feelings she's harboring for him. However, Didak also begins to see Alba in a different light. One afternoon, Didak is on top of the water tank's ledge, and observes his surroundings with his binoculars. Suddenly, his attention falls on Alba, who is watering the plants. He sees Alba disrobing and drenching herself with water due to the heat. Upon witnessing this, Didak's gaze lingers on her exposed back. Once again, their relationship dynamics are challenged when Alba asks Didak to help her knead the dough. Since Didak is inexperienced, Alba demonstrates the process, resulting in them sharing an innocent skinship. Yet, Didak can't contain his feelings, so he hastily kisses Alba and leaves. Though this stuns Alba, a smile forms on her lips. During the night, a strong storm devastates Alba and Didak's garden. Alba tries to salvage the garden beds, but the damage is too severe. Due to this, the two decide to leave their place the next day. While using her phone, Alba is surprised to see that Didak successfully restored the tractor to a pristine condition. Enjoy, she hugs the young man. After packing their belongings, the two begin their journey to reach Barcelona. Upon reaching their destination, Didak makes noise by honking the tractor's horn, whereas Alba persistently calls her father's phone. Despite their efforts to make their presence known, Dara is nowhere to be found. Alba becomes emotional, and Didak comforts her. This urges Alba to confide in him, so she admits regretting not hugging her father when he left. Then, she tells Didak they might not be able to find him anymore. However, Didak remains optimistic and convinces her to continue their search. Alba smiles and eventually agrees with him. Moments later, the two arrive at the center of the town, but there are no survivors left. Hence, they travel to Barcelona's infamous Camp No Stadium to stay for a while. Despite its state, Didak excitedly walks inside and admires it. Right away, he grabs his football and begins executing his tricks. He calls for Alba, and the young woman happily cheers for him. When Didak tries to score a goal, Alba tells him she will record such core memory. Once set, Didak executes his kick, resulting in him successfully scoring a goal. The young man happily celebrates his goal and does his signature celebratory pose. Since this pose exposes his body, Alba is distracted, resulting in her dropping the phone. Before something escalates, she immediately retrieves the phone from the ground. By nighttime, awkwardness fills the air, so Alba initiates a conversation with Didak. Though they converse, they can't escape their attraction for each other. Therefore, Alba kisses Didak, and he reciprocates. This leads to them making love throughout the night. After a few days, the couple leaves the city and begins a new life near the sea. While they build their comfortable home, Alba announces that she is pregnant, causing Didak to happily carry and hug her. To prepare for her pregnancy, Alba visits an abandoned library and collects books about motherhood. On the other hand, Didak collects toys for their unborn child. Once he reunites with Alba, he checks on her and asks what she is reading. 
Alba reveals that she is searching for a possible name for their child. Didak suggests they name the child Mar. However, Alba thinks Kai is more suitable as it means sea in Hawaiian and is gender neutral. Upon learning this, Didak expresses his agreement. Months pass by, and the couple becomes busier in building a comfortable life for their future child. In parallel, Alba's pregnancy bump becomes noticeable, and her due is approaching. One night, while reading her father's diary, a sudden, painful cramp stops her from her activity. Though she struggles, she musters her strength and approaches Didak. She tells him their baby is coming, so Didak assists her in a comfortable birthing position. Once Alba lays down, Didak remains calm and guides his partner in her breathing. Despite the pain, the young woman complies with his instructions and goes into labor. After a few pushes, Alba finally gives birth to their son, Kai. The next morning, while the couple takes care of Kai, Alba notices a boat near the shore. Alba excitedly goes to check, expecting that there will be survivors there. But, a skeptical Didak dismisses the idea and tells her they don't need anyone. Despite his reaction, Alba puts Kai down in his crib and tries to get the captain's attention. However, Alba doesn't get any answer. Instead, she notices an unconscious man lying on the shore. Thinking it is her father, she quickly runs to check on him, with Didak tailing her. Didak checks out the man, only to find out he is not Dara. Once conscious, the man recounts how he accidentally arrives at the couple's shore. He is happy to meet the couple and their child since he thought he was the only survivor. He also compliments the couple's house and excitedly shares information about the island he lives on. However, he states that he mostly spent his time on his boat to look for other survivors. Once Alba hears this, she invites him to stay with them. Despite not uttering any word, Didak's opposition is evident in his face, and the man catches this. Hence, he refuses Alba's offer and insists he will stay on his boat. Before he leaves, he asks the two for a hug since he's been deprived of human touch for a long time. Once hugged, the man can't contain the emotions he's feeling, so he abruptly leaves. For the next few days, the man helps the couple improve their survival skills, particularly focusing on Didak. Despite their growing closeness, Didak remains apprehensive towards the man. One morning, while Alba nurses Kai, unbeknownst to her, the man is secretly peeping on her. Didak catches him, and he confronts the man. However, the man reasons that he's only observing Alba's situation and plans to give her honey to relieve her pain from nursing. With his reason, Alba appreciates the man's kind gesture. He shares that the honey is special since it was produced by his own bees that feed on a flower resembling a rooster's crest. Though Alba expresses interest in the man's story, Didak doesn't. He tells him his boat is ready, implicitly implying that Didak wants him gone. Hearing this causes the man's smile to fade, and he announces his departure. Once Alba hears this, she still insists the man to stay. Suddenly, he invites them to a party on his boat this evening. He explains that it's his appreciation for the couple's kindness, and celebrating the new humanity. Ecstatic, Alba agrees to meet him later. Once on the boat, Alba and the man enjoy the night, while Didak spends his time brooding alone. The man invites the two to spend the night with him, but Didak objects. However, Alba is keen on convincing Didak since she wants to try sleeping on the boat. Immediately, the man reveals his surprise, a vintage movie projector. After many years, the couple can finally watch a movie. The next day, Didak wakes up first and feels that something is strange. He gets up and realizes they're too far from the shore. Due to this, he tries to alert Alba. Despite his efforts, the man quickly punches Didak, causing him to fall into the water. The loud splash of Didak's fall wakes Alba, and she worries for her partner. Like in the past, Alba prepares to dive into the water to save Didak. The man tries to stop her, but Alba dismisses him. Alba successfully saves Didak, but the couple loses Kai as the man sails away. Left with no other option, the two return to their house feeling frustrated. Moments later, the couple watches over the sea, longing for their son. With a newfound determination, Alba vows to get Kai back. The following day, the two visit the abandoned library to find clues about the man's island. However, Alba bursts out of frustration as she doesn't know where to start. Thankfully, when she accompanies Didak in fixing a boat, she notices the rooster logo on the boat's door. She remembers that the man's bees feed on a flower resembling a rooster's crest. Therefore, they immediately revisit the library and browse through botanical books. After a few browses, Alba finally finds the flower and the man's location. The next morning, the couple quickly embarks on their journey to retrieve their son. With their efforts, the couple finally reaches the island. While walking, the two hear Kai's cries, so they follow it, leading them to the man's fort. Alba peeps through a hole and scrutinizes Kai's possible location. Instead, they see the man walking, and a nervous Alba urges Didak to shoot him. However, Didak refuses as he worries the man is not alone, and they will get overpowered. A few seconds later, the man re-emerges and goes to his 
his bee farm. This allows the two to follow Kai's cries. Alba enters an underground tent and discovers her son is locked in a cage. She tries to break the lock, but she's unsuccessful. Therefore, she searches the whole area for the keys. Meanwhile, Didak acts as a lookout to buy Alba some time. After rummaging through a tray, Alba finds a set of keys and immediately tries them on the lock. Sadly, nothing works. Therefore, she goes outside and meets with Didak. She tells him about Kai's situation, and it frustrates him. Therefore, they switch roles. Alba acts as a guard, but Kai's cries weaken her, causing her to lose focus. As a result, the man sneaks up behind her and grabs her. At the exact moment, Didak emerges and sees Alba as the man's captive. Helpless, Didak complies with his orders. Afterward, the man traps the couple using hammocks. While he secures his traps, he tells Didak that he is hopeful to have a harmonious relationship with them, but he expresses his dislike for the young man. Upon hearing that, Didak threatens to kill him, and it further angers the man. Before things escalate, Alba bargains with him to let her go with her son, and she'll welcome him into their family. The man immediately accepts her offer and frees her. However, the man doesn't let her off the hook. He tells her she needs to follow his orders, or she will meet her demise. Alba complies, and they head to Kai's location. Once inside the tent, Alba hurriedly approaches Kai, but the man stops her. He tells her that she needs to let him cry sometimes, and comments that his cries sound like music. Since Alba remains silent, the man just gives her the key. Alba rushes to Kai and nurses him. While nursing her child, the man leers at her, making Alba feel uncomfortable. Immediately, the man leaves with a snicker. The man returns to Didak's location to taunt him. Unbeknownst to him, Alba escapes with her son. Upon sensing her, the man shouts at her, whereas Didak urges her to continue her escape. Instead of chasing after them, the man taunts Didak again. The young man spits at him as a response. Angered, the man plays a trick on Didak. He uses the pliers to twist Didak's crotch. The excruciating pain causes Didak to shout, stopping Alba in her tracks. After a few seconds, Didak passes out, and the man begins to hunt down Alba. The young woman sees him outside, so she flees. While she's running, she accidentally leaves her scarf behind, giving the man a clue. After finding a place to hide, she uses her pinky finger to pacify Kai. Feeling that the man goes in a different direction, she continues to run. Once again, Kai starts crying, so Alba hides under a tree's root and calms her son. Suddenly, she feels that the man is near, so she thinks of a deceitful plan. As the man calls for Alba, he hears Kai's cries underneath him, so he goes down to check, only to find out that the sound comes from Kai's recorded video. He wastes no time and runs back to his place. Meanwhile, Alba successfully returns to Didak and tries to free him. Struggling, Didak asks her to give him a knife. However, the the man's sudden arrival halts their plan. Alba apologizes to him and plans to return to the tent, but he stops her. He instructs her to put her son back in the crib. Then, he approaches her and reminds Alba of her betrayal. As a punishment, he shoots her in the leg. While he reprimands Alba, Didak successfully breaks free. He uses this opportunity to stab the man in his back. However, the man is able to slap him, and the two fight each other. Though hurt, Alba grabs the gun and threatens to shoot the man. This doesn't faze him. Instead, he guilt trips her. Unaffected, Alba shoots him in the shoulder, and he attacks her. This causes Alba to fall down the tent. Didak comes to her rescue and fights the man with a hoe. However, the man deflects his attack using a pitchfork. The two continue fighting until they both lose their weapons. Immediately, the man grabs the gun while Didak grabs a scythe. When he hears Kai's whimper, Didak makes the first attack, causing the man to shoot him. He successfully kills the man, but he knows he's nearing his end too. Therefore, he approaches his son and kisses him for the last time. A crying Alba approaches him, but before he can bid her farewell, he falls to the ground, gasping for air. Immediately, Alba tries to stop the bleeding, but Didak passes away. During the night, Alba mourns Didak's death and sends his body into the sea. After a few years, Alba and Kai reside in her previous house. Kai has grown into a healthy boy and likes football like his father. After playing, he tries to take Alba's phone, but she stops him, afraid he might break it. Instead, she puts Kai on her lap, and they both reminisce about Didak's memories from her video diaries. Subscribe to watch more videos like this. Turn on notifications and leave a like to help the channel out. Thank you for watching.